my gun and cardio room. Remodeling this as well to put Gallo Tech on the walls and hang up all my guns. But for right now, I'm ready to do cardio. All right, cardio. We are five and a half weeks into the challenge now. Five and a half weeks in, feeling pretty good. Um, you guys just watched the uh, the posing video I had about a little over four and a half, five, about five weeks in of me. So whenever I look back at that posing video, um, this is the reason you do progress pictures. The reason you have progress videos is so that you don't fucking forget what you look like. You can take advantage of the good and the bad. Uh, because whenever I look back at progress pictures, there's times where I'm like, oh man, I look like shit. And then there's times where I'm like, fuck, I look way better than I thought I did at that time. The reason you want to track your progress. And that's why you want to keep notebook to watch your progress. But in that video, you know, this whole transformation challenge for me has been about not abusing steroids. Generation Iron made a post on Facebook, I believe it was. Oh, maybe, it, I don't even fucking remember how long ago it was. But um, they made a post about me looking great without the use of steroids. Still using steroids. Just not fucking abusing them. I take 250 milligrams of test a week. That is significantly lower than I did before. 750 megs of test is like my favorite. A thousand megs of test a week. It's a good feeling. <laughs> but um, no, and people were like, ah, he's still taking shit. And so it was like I jumped into the fake natty category all of a sudden. But um, this all has been about the process of me transforming not only my body, but more importantly, my mind. How my, how my mind operates. Because whether anybody wants to believe it or not, for, for me, and I'm guessing many others, because if I feel a certain way uh, from you know, a mental standpoint about something, I imagine a lot of others do as well. well. I've been taking steroids for 16 years. 16 years. And it has become part of my life. So for me to stop taking them and like, there's times when I would come off and I'm like, yeah, it's cool, you know? But this time I'm off, I'm, I'm not off of them. <laughs> I'm doing the HRT. I'm saying, whenever you hear me say I'm off of them, it's because like, I wish I could. I wish I could be off of them. I don't wanna take them anymore. And it's simply because health and what I'm doing with my life outside of the gym is it's it for me in life I love it but I have a dependence upon testosterone and my goal is to you know I have what, three more weeks and then I go to the doctor get my blood work done and uh, and see where we are and uh, assess all of my levels I'll assess my blood work and if I'm supposed to take it down and set 250 megs of test a week I get on to 200 and that's what the fuck I do but in the meantime, I'm going to push myself physically because if I don't go to the gym, I'm going to lose my shit. If I don't do my cardio, I'm going to lose my shit. And uh, I want to prove to myself that I can look good without taking, ser without taking a bunch of steroids. Simple as that. Um, and <laughs> it is different. Yes. I know how I could get so much leaner right now with the use of uh, other types of steroids and cutting drugs. I just started taking a bunch of T3 and Clen, up the test by about, up the test another CC, add a little bit of Winstrow in, perform at a fucking higher level, then throw in some Tren. Yeah! Oh, but, mm -mm. 
I'm not competing and uh, I don't want to I don't want my health to go downhill any further. I want my health to be good. I want to be able to I want my heart resting heart rate to be under to be under 60 beats a minute. I want my blood pressure to be 120 over 70, 120 over 80, somewhere in there. Like, that's what I want. I don't want to have to go get blood work done in my fucking hematocrit be over 56, 58% again. Be in the 60s. Fuck that. So, I'm doing it this way. But, um, that video that y'all watched it posing, when I look at it, I'm like, man, looking pretty good. Uh, but the things that get under my skin, back fat, back fat's always been the, the last thing to leave and the first thing to fucking come back. That's where the whole, uh, fat, wide, wide waisted white dude comes from. The short, wide waisted white guy. Or fat, wide waisted white guy. Just that's where I hold my fat, is in my stomach. Um, my arms could be lean as fuck. My legs, my glutes, but the fucking fat around my waist, it'll just hang out. But overall, I'm holding my weight pretty well. I'm at 200 and I'm roughly 215, 216 pounds. Um, I don't like to weigh myself every single day. It'll start getting in my head and fucking with me. Uh, you saw me enter 220 pounds on here. That's just, I don't know, I only count by, I only go by fives. I'm never gonna put a lower weight than I actually am somewhere. So not until I'm a solid 215 or under for a significant period of time before I do that. It's one of them weird, dumb mental things. But, uh, no, every morning, uh, five to six days a week, I wake up, come down and do my cardio. Some mornings, I sit up there, have a cup of coffee before I come down and do cardio. Today's Wednesday. Uh, both of my kids are remote learning uh, on Wednesdays. They don't go to school on Wednesdays. So, we don't have to wake up and rush around. SJ, he's up enough in the middle of the fucking night. He's teething right now, but so Wednesdays are a little, uh, a little easier in the morning on Hannah and I, but yeah, so going back to the video, things are things that I look at in that video and think, man, that's great. How lean I am. Uh, I'm dieting, dieting pretty decent. It's time to put the it's time to fucking put the hammer down. Uh, cut out. Start cutting out a little bit of the carbohydrates on my lower days. I don't eat many carbohydrates to begin with. Probably anywhere between 150 and 250. 300 on some higher days. Uh, but that's on a big day. One cheat meal a week. And then uh, the diet consists. It's like a Mediterranean diet. That's thanks to Presk. Um, lean white meats, fish, oils, avocados, um, fruits, veggies, complex carbohydrates, rice, potatoes. Um, simplistic diet. The fats I normally get are from oil avocados, peanut butter, um, red meat maybe twice a week. Uh, depends on the day, depends on how I'm feeling. I ate, I ate a rough steak on Sunday night. Fucked my belly all up. It was a dry aged meat from one of the local book butchers. Didn't sit well in the belly. So ever since Sunday, I still, my stomach still doesn't feel the same. I was a little bloated and felt a little shitty from it. Whenever I ate it, 30 minutes later, I was shitting my brains out. So just recovering from that. My stomach 
it's not the same as it used to be. It's not as ironclad, but also I think it's because I eat uh, such clean foods that whenever I do throw something into it that might not agree with me, it just fucks me all up. But, so, those videos, that video, I'm pleased with everything, I'm pleased with the progress, but when I look at it, whenever I look at a video, it's not so much I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, I look great. I'm looking at where I can improve. And, like I said, the back fat thing throws me off. Um, overall size is tough to look at simply because I know I could be bigger. Uh, that's something mentally that I just got to get over because I'm never going to be 240 pounds again. Uh -oh. But I'm enjoying this. It's a challenge for me. And that's the whole point of everything for, for you guys as well. It's supposed to be a challenge. It's supposed to be difficult. Alright, but overall, I'm happy with the progress working towards more right now like I said I'm gonna put the hammer down add a little bit of extra cardio in uh, my typical day is cardio in the morning training in the afternoon I weight train four days a week um, nothing crazy nothing intense I want to get my weight down to under 210 pounds uh, and once I'm under 210 my heart rate my resting heart rate my blood pressure my blood work Overall, everything looks good. I'm gonna be like, okay, let's do, let's keep on track for this for another two months. Let's hold steady. See how well we can just, me not fuck up or my body go haywire on me. And then from there, my next step is to do some new feat of strength. Get healthy, stay healthy. And then I wanna deadlift 650 pounds at under 200 pounds not geared the fuck out of my mind because geared the fuck out of my mind I know exactly how to deadlift 650 pounds I want to do it uh, I want to do it at that weight and yeah I want to do a program I've never done it before I've never actually d done a strength program um, other than eat the food lift the weights take the shit I know how to do proper technique, I know how to do all that, but uh, I'd love to do it this way. Why? Because in my head that's a challenge. And I'm gonna need something physical to keep me the fuck on track or I'll go crazy. So, yeah. Other than that, cardio. Every morning down here in my room, as you saw, I do cardio in sandals. I don't do anything crazy. I'm not doing anything crazy this morning, cardio-wise. Behind me, you're probably wondering what the fuck that thing is. So the dudes that owned the house before me were gunsmiths. This was their gun room as well. And that window there, take that off and it's actually a, a, a swing open door out into 200 yards open area where they would end up sighting everything in, sighting all the rifles that they built in. So, pretty cool. We live out in the country here. I'll go out show you outside. We just had uh, we just had an attached garage built onto the house. It's nice, we got projects. We're making our own little compound here. Putting in a pool next year. Pool in a gazebo. Adding on to the deck this year. Putting a whole patio area outside for the kiddos trampoline picnic tables playhouse all that fun shit cardio what I'm getting ready to do I've been talking the whole time but uh, whenever I do my cardio in the morning if people want tips and tricks of what I do here for 45 motherfucking minutes so you see me leaning in to this some people give other people shit, oh, you shouldn't lean in, this and that. Well, as I'm here talking to you guys and I'm leaning into this, I don't know how I can do it. So when I'm bringing my knees up, okay, 
I'm actually doing a contraction with my obliques. Okay? So if I'm here and I lean up, I'm leaning in, so I'm contracting my obliques. Okay? Like each step side to side. I wasn't doing as much movement, but here. See if I can do it. Man, no. So each side, I'll just do contractions back and forth. I ain't gonna fucking be able to do this. The whole reason, go this side, then this, contractions. Why do I do it? I actually don't know. I started doing it one day because I like to do abs in the morning. I'll end up doing 200, 250 sit-ups and 200, 250 push-ups after my cardio, make things fucking harder. And uh, with doing this, it was just added extra work to it. So if I was moving slow like I am right now, not fucking pumping my legs, I was going to be able to do working my obliques, working my obliques the whole time, step by step. Because when you're doing your cardio, you step with a fucking purpose. If you don't step with a purpose, then what the fuck you doing? I've been talking to you guys here this whole this whole morning here, or this whole time doing cardio, and I've been doing it, but I haven't been doing it the same way I normally do, because usually it's a little fucking intense, stepping with the purpose, feeling it, feeling it. I get into the zone. Whether I'm looking at my phone, reading emails, going through messages, checking numbers, I'm stepping. I'm in my zone. You get into your fucking world and you stay there. Because if not, you're wasting your time. Because cardio is a cunt. It's not like you're like, ha, ah, I'm just gonna go do it, it's easy. It's still like every morning. There's mornings I wake up. Last week I woke up and said, fuck this shit. I don't wanna do it. Me waking up and saying, I don't wanna do my cardio. That means I'm starting to really push myself. That's a good thing. Yeah, you should be there, Seth. That's good. That's great. You kind of want to start quitting. Yeah. That means that you're challenging yourself and you're challenging your body. It means we're getting somewhere. But when I'm doing the cardio, like I said, side to side, knee in, in. And I get into a zone. Me, whenever I lean in, I'm just here. I'll kick it up a notch, just hang out. Whenever SJ's with me doing cardio, I either put him in here, he's mobile now, so I take it out and put it in our, our little living space out in the basement here, drag this out there and put on the TV and he listens to, like, uh, I'll put on kids' movies, but he'll look at it for about two minutes and then fucking get into anything. But. As you're doing it, you're doing a slow, steady cardio. I like to do ab abdominal contractions, oblique contractions. And then, when I'm really fucking pumping, I kick it up a notch, and I will do intervals up and down. I'll end up standing straight up and get my legs pumping. Now, like I said, when you're doing cardio, you're stepping with a purpose. So. I could be on my toes, I could be pushing from my heels on this stepper. Whenever I'm doing it, I'm doing it with a purpose. So I will contract whatever muscle group I want to work harder. Glutes, for example. When I'm doing this, I'm not just pumping my legs to do it, just to get the cardio over with. Because motherfucker, I'm here. I'm doing the work, so why not find a way to make it better? Find a way to work harder. Find a way to optimize what the fuck I'm doing right now to get the most from it. So when I step, each time I step when I'm up here, whether I'm going fast or slower, I'm squeezing my glutes. I'm activating them. I'm feeling these motherfuckers. If I lean forward, if I'm still standing up leaning forward, I get the glute and hamstring tie-in. I can feel it. And I'm making sure I feel my glutes. Each fucking step move. Yeah. I lean into it and keep moving. I'm gonna go back and forth. 
with my body, the contractions. Stand up straight. Squeeze them ass cheeks, motherfucker. That's what's going on the whole time I'm doing cardio. Whether I'm on my phone or just n nothing. I'm pushing myself. I want to feel it. I want to be in it. Because you're already doing the cardio. You're already here. You should be making it as hard as humanly possible to get the most from it. When people ask me about my physique, or about my cardio, about the amount of work that I do for something, or like, how do I get to look like that? There is all the science in the world. There's all the anecdotal evidence, the bro science. There's everything out there that is measurable. But the one thing that's not is your determination and will. It's not. And as you guys know, there's people out there who are just, motherfucker, they're hard to break. You want to be one of those people. So whenever you go to do something, you do it with such purpose and such intensity and such passion that you become undeniable. Make things as hard as possible. That's my goal. Because every time something was hard, it was worth doing. I mean, that's how I attack every single day. That, that doesn't leave my mind. I will always have a chip on my shoulder about people telling me Starting an apparel business is fucking stupid. Starting a supplement company, you'll never make it. It's too hard. It's stupid, it's so saturated. Always. No matter how successful we become with anything, I'll always have that chip because I let's take that chip personally. But you should be doing the same with everything in your life. Make your cardio harder. Don't just get through it. Don't just be like, oh, I got through my cardio this morning. No. Make that cardio your bitch. I want this thing to kick my fucking ass. That way I know I'm still in check. Have to push yourself. So, those are just a few of the things that I do on here that keeps my shit going. Um, I alternate days. Some days are a little more steady, like today. Other days, I'm doing super high intensity, fucking pumping my legs, you know, minute and a half, 30 second break, minute and a half, 30 second break. When I say break, I'm stepping like I am right now. Comfortably, I can still hold a conversation. But, yeah. Doing the vlogging, I need to do more of it. We're so goddamn busy, it's out of control. The companies are growing exponentially. Thank you guys for all of the support. It is fucking incredible. Without the support of you guys, we aren't able to do all the cool shit that we're doing with our companies and for our communities. We don't get to do what we did for Zoe. We don't get to employ, fuck, well over 35 people now. We need more people. It's insane. So thank you guys for everything that you do to support these companies and keep being good motherfuckers. That's what it's all about. Whenever you're going to challenge yourself, doing a challenge like this, the HWMF Transformation Challenge, or just getting outside of your comfort zone, it's supposed to be fucking hard. You're supposed to want to quit. You're supposed to think that you can't do it. If you don't have those feelings, you're not working hard enough. You're not pushing yourself hard enough. If you don't have days when you wake up, right before you go to bed, or throughout the day when you're daydreaming, fuck dude, it'd be way easier just to cut this shit out. Just to stop. Then you're not working hard enough. Those are normal thoughts and normal feelings. Don't quit. If you quit or find excuses, you're only quitting yourself. 
You're only making excuses for yourself. We all try to do it. We all look for it. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it in the past. I've quit. I've given up on myself. I've, I've found excuses on reasons not to do things just because they were hard, but I've found an excuse to make it seem like I didn't quit because it was hard. Those are normal things in life. But if you're training yourself and then you quit on yourself during training, and you're quitting on yourself, doing it over and over, you're now training yourself to quit. So it's, it's common practice. That's why you hear so many uh, influential people say the same thing that I just did in a similar manner, however. But, and the other thing that you hear them say often is do the work. I say it a little more, a little more entertaining, be a hard working motherfucker. It's because I want you to be good at everything that you do. I don't want you to just be good at one thing. Whatever it is you're doing, do it with such purpose and such intensity that people wonder why the fuck you're doing it. And it's because you are a hardworking motherfucker. You have, this is all you get. You just get this life. And you're gonna fucking work the ever-loving shit out of it and feel every single fucking feeling possible. That's how I live. Whatever I'm doing, I'm going, motherfucker. All in. Feeling it. I want to experience it. Otherwise, I'm just going through life as just there. No. I want to be around people that have the same energy. I want to do great things. I want to feel it. This is hard? Yeah, it's supposed to be. I want to experience it. Whenever I go into work, I don't just sit there and twiddle my fucking thumbs. No, I want to have the best supplement company in the fucking game. I want to have t-shirts and hats from All-American Roughneck that have meaning so when people feel, put, them all, put the shirts on, put the hats on, they have feeling. They get it. Cool shit. I want to go experience great things. I want my kids to be able to do things that they want to do and experience them. Experience life. Be a hard-working motherfucker. And that's that thing where, you know, if you quit on yourself over and over, if you find excuses for a reason you didn't do your cardio, and in that same day you find a reason that you broke your diet, you find a reason not to train, you find a reason to not be present with your significant other or your children. Find, you're finding excuses. You're not being the best motherfucker you can be. You're training yourself on how to get out of a situation. Don't do that. Face that motherfucker head on and go. It's supposed to be tough. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be. What do you say, big guy? <laughs> you see yourself? Ooh. Whoa. See, that's some wild shit, bruh. Love kids. It doesn't get much better. Post cardio, uh, I come up, I make the coffee, which I just did. You saw me hanging out with SJ. Now I come in, get ready, get a shower, do all my vacuum, uh, my vacuum practice, and uh, pose a little bit, see where I'm at, and I don't step on the scale today. Mm -mm, not gonna do it. Uh, I usually step on a scale twice a week, uh, usually on a Tuesday and a Friday. He has arrived. Uh, uh, you're back. He's mobile, so he follows us everywhere. But, um, so I'll go through, show you what I do, vacuum practice here, uh, and then, yeah, do a little posing, and then get a shower. I'm gonna show you my dick, though. From an oblique standpoint, 
That's why I'm stepping. So I'm stepping. It's all I'm doing the whole time on cardio. Whole time. Or working on my glutes. Vacuums. So, easiest way to start. You can do vacuums even though you're fat. Mm -hmm. You can do it. There are certain exercises that I have done over the years to help me be able to get to this point. Um, first of all, you all your all your internal organs that are there in your belly got to go somewhere. They're going to get sucked back and up and into your rib cage. So over the years doing uh, heavy dumbbell pullovers to help expand my rib cage and open me up, I view that as one of the reasons that I'm able to do this. Also, the types of foods that I'm eating and then just practice. Being able to sit here, you're here. Dumbbell pullovers, what do I test being able to do a vacuum to? Dumbbell pullovers, types of food I'm eating, breathing techniques, and then just standing here practicing. I'll be here. I don't care if you just get that far. You don't have to start. Because I sure as fuck didn't. I'm not in the best of shape right now. I'm getting there. I don't have killer abs and thin skin and no fat on my on my abs. Mm -mm. Types of foods you're eating. You want to be able to feel light in the stomach. You want to be able to not be as bloated. You don't want to eat a ton of foods that bloat your belly and fuck you up. Uh, you want things that are easily digestible, easily absorbed, and still continue to fuel you. Uh, and then breathing techniques while you're doing your cardio. I was able to do a nice steady cardio and continue to hold a conversation the entire time So you need to get into shape. You don't have to but in my head. I like to fucking be in shape uh, So breathing techniques deep breaths in Hold Nice and smooth out be able to control your heart rate uh, That's one of the things that I've been doing over the past six weeks of getting into being, I want to be able to do a nasty fucking vacuum whenever I'm, whenever I'm lighter than I am now. And then standing here and just figuring out how to suck all this inside. So, every morning, every morning I do cardio, I do vacuum posing. It takes time, but uh, those are just the simple steps that I do it. And like, how do I do it? I just take deep breaths in. Now, you won't be able to just keep doing vacuums, starting off and doing them right out of the gate. No, it takes time. So step by step, just stand in front of the mirror. I don't give a fuck if you're in shape, six pack abs, a little bit of fat sitting there, does not matter. Give it a try. If that's something you want to do, you got to work for it. Try it out. See where you stand. And then continue to work for it every single day. All right. But that's it. It's a long and short of everything. Um, big thing with all this, with any type of challenge like we're doing or when you're challenging yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Uh -uh. Don't do it. Don't quit on yourself. Don't find excuses. The more excuses you find... The more often you quit on yourself, you're training yourself to do these things. Train yourself to be the baddest motherfucker you know. That should be your goal every day. And get the old lady good.